Wow, I can't even say a word. Ubi and Gravy tipping two hundred dollars between them. Wow, what do you even say to that? Thanks so much. Seriously, both of y'all, that's incredible. Super support and uh, welcome, traders, to the stream, the Monday stream, where stocks, stonks, booming, man. Tech mainly driving this market upward cues all-time highs wow um facebook hitting a trillion dollar market cap second largest gainer on the s p 500 only second to what the one the god stock right now nvidia that uh, achieved 800 dollars for the first time in its history of 500 dollars. oh my god are you kidding me Ross just won up both of y'all. What? Ross tipped two hundred two dollars. We boys our team it. <laughs> wow, uh, roll tide, Ross. Thanks so much, man, for the two hundred two dollars. He just topped himself, so now the penthouse Jesus is him again, but it's by one dollar. There it is. It's updated for you up there. Thank you so much, Ross. What the heck, Ubi? What the heck, Gray V? Man, did you see that? Freaking out here. Okay, freaking out. Oh, so uh, great day for stocks. Bitcoin, meh. Altcoins, whoa. Altcoins outperforming Bitcoin today. Well, guess what? The big big story. I think it's Ethereum back above two thousand dollars, man. Seriously. What's up, Smitty man? Smitty tip twenty five dollars. Let's go BTC. Smitty, thanks so much for the. Uh, contribution and yeah let's go Bitcoin let's go altcoins okay man dead middle of the trading range coming off that bullish cipher coming off that bullish divergence still below the 200 moving average at least the 200 moving average is starting to level out a little bit it's still down sloping but uh, yeah I mean you go sideways for a while but uh, it's all about what level will we see next will we see 30k again or are we going to 38.5 to 40k I think whichever way we go is going to quite possibly determine where we're going to break up or down all right with this market so just because we the the length of time we've been inside the range is just it's starting to get extended and uh, when you get this deep that's when the probability increases that you're going to break out one way or another all right hype for the legendary mitch ea max array these are not thanks for the kind of words you're labeling people labeling me again dude i'm a terrible person i'm an awesome person i'm good i'm bad I am simple TA man that likes streaming it. That's that's as far as it goes here. Okay, thanks, dude, for the kind words. All right, uh, 
And y'all like charts too, so we all have a commonality. That's why we're all communing every day, looking at these things, all right? So, um, kind of nothing burger on Bitcoin, but again, it is Ethereum. Remember yesterday, we were talking about the bullish butterfly, one bottom, two bottoms, and now we are above the major area that had to be broken <clears throat> February 19th. That at one point, it was the highest level Ethereum had ever seen. Anything above that, you know, just if you were here yesterday, you know, or if you've been monitoring Ethereum's price since April, you know what happens between $2,000 and $2,500, straight up, straight down. So, you know, you can come back, test, and hold it. But if you can stay above 2000 long enough, probability starts increasing that you will see eventually $2,500 again. Now, that will obviously require Bitcoin seeing 38.5 to 40k for sure i mean that's that's got to happen and but it will that, that will be where ethereum's target is if bitcoin does continue uh to rally here all right great news for some altcoins and it's not you know it's across the market dude like wi-fi right look at that dude remember it's the bullish bat pattern textbook bullish bat one bottom two bottoms and you know you held he held the divergence continued on. He got even tail end MACD divergence on Wi-Fi on that second bottom. And you held the very critical 28.6, 28,600. And now you're butting up against a very critical $31,000, $32,000. Because if you break that, probability is really high. You see 39,640 again. I mean, that's historical price action correlation normally between 31K and 40K is straight up, straight down, 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 straight up, straight down. You get it? You understand? If YFI can break 32K, you could go straight up again to see 39.6. Ah, it makes sense, man. It makes sense. So let's see uh, these resistances get broken. I mean, Ethereum already broke it. Wi-Fi hasn't, it's very close though. If Bitcoin sees 40K, Wi-Fi's probability is extremely high. We'll see almost $40,000, okay. Y'all here, everyone hanging out, man. Everyone uh, have a good Monday. Did you check your portfolios? You participate in the stock market? Give me a break, dude. Give me a freaking break. Contractor still in, hey, I got my offices kind of fixed up so I can finally un box on my clothes I've been feeling like a hobo with boxes of clothes in my, my master bedroom so good news progress still going on over here all right uh, that's why have I, I mean, we look at Bitcoin cash up five percent today and yeah, this one you know was like good uh, the only way it could have I mean I guess it reversed to the one two seven two one, two, it never even made it the one two seven two. It's very close. Uh, so this one, not really anything, any kind of formal formal harmonic. If we're talking about textbook stuff, it just reversed like everything else. Just not at like a critical. I, I mean, you know, three eighty three. That's what it did. I mean, it hit like a a support resistance from history and bounced, but it's really not that big of a deal it's not that big of a support resistance so you've seen before an inflection point january 29th where you hit it and you rallied like crazy it's kind of similar you know noise, noise. congrats on the new pad bro can you please check storage looks ready to me Fong Nguyen, thanks so much for the 25 eva super chat yeah man we'll look at uh storage and altcoin, I'm sure, looks similar to many others where they have made deep, deep reach. I'm talking from their lows in December, September, whenever they were, to their, their highest highs of this previous crazy run we went on that lasted four or five months, right? They have, most of them have lost 78 to 88 to 90% of their value, right? And at those levels where there is deep value perceived, they are creating XABCDs all over the place. And yeah, they're, some are like going deeper than you thought. You know, we remember thinking a lot of them were like seven, eight, sixes, right? Oh my God, it's a girl. But then Bitcoin sells off one more time and the alts just keep getting wrecked or Bitcoin just kind of is sideways. These are actually making lower lows. So yeah, we'll look at storage, man. Ross, what is it, man? Ethereum one hour? Oh, okay, yep, real quick. Let's go back to it since we just looked at it, right? So. 
Forgot my request ETH1 HR4 HR thanks RT. Mm, I mean not really anything not much anything changes. If you unless you want a little education, 60 minute, okay, right? Like doesn't really matter, it's not that significant. But there was a bullish bat pattern, right? Scott Carney be like, yeah, dude. Who knows? Scott Carney was probably dreaming about this one, you know? Look. There was where the double bottom was where you can't see it on the four hour. There was an XABCD that was pretty textbook. You know, it was a little too high on C, but that, there you go. And that, what did that do? It ushered in a rally, and now you're above 2K, and the name of the game is staying above 2K. Right, you, you really want to stay above 2K. I get it, you could very well sell off. Uh, one thing in hindsight, again, like, what do you want me to do, man? Like, it's hindsight, the run happened. If we were looking at the 60, if you requested the 60 minute uh, yesterday or something, you know, whatever, we'd, we'd be saying, hey man, look, it's like an inverse head and shoulders, kind of, right? I mean, almost shifting, they're not that reliable because it is not a very significant time scale. It was there. Uh, so they, you got that going for you. So there's your 60 minutes, and now this is, right? And again, everything, anything above 2K is really good, man, all right? So I think you, you could possibly fall below 2K. Just, just make a higher load than 1750, and all will be well. You've made uh, Ethereum made its highest level it's seen since June 21st, which it's only about a week. So uh, cool, you know. I think that's above 2K, really good stuff, man. All right, that's your uh, 60 minute, and then your four hour, which we've already done. We're just gonna rehash. Is the butterfly? It's the confirmation low at the uh, butterfly PCC, the 1.618 Fib extension, the golden mean ratio maximum threshold of the butterfly that can go between the 1272 and the 1618 that's as deep as it goes man and again bullish diverge in the rsi and in the end bullish diverge in the macd on the second low that's exactly the stuff that dreams are made of at least with the system that uh you know is used here all right there you go ross dude just getting out of the way because it was just here man okay Gotta stay hydrated in these trying, troubling times, right? Where there's just been a drought in crypto, but it seems that uh, some good stuff has been uh, happening. Oh, you're talking about 60 minute? Yeah, some bearish divergence, maybe. On yep, bearish divergence on the 60 minute. Yes, that is very real. So it it's gonna they go. If it plays out, you're one to 2k, maybe even lower, right? Could go test the 200 moving average 1950, right? Yep. So there is a little bit of bearish divergence on the 60 minute. It's been a nice run. So maybe a pullback happens here. Let's hope it underperforms. And let's hope what was once resistance support becomes support again. And that's it, hope it underperforms. So yeah, sure. We're gonna be real technical there, but your four hour, no issues, dude. Your four hour is bullish convergence. There is nothing implying downside on a more significant time scale than the 60 minute, right? So nice. Very nice. Okay. Another day, man. Bruh. Matthew underscore D tip $25. NLS for each nice hammer at an awesome ice line. We'll look at the awesome ice line on NLS. Thank you, dude. I wonder if we could find more on other more significant time scales, and that would be even awesome. More awesome. Okay. So, Ethereum. Let's look at uh, total real quick, right? Why not? Why not look at total? I like totals. Here it is, total. Well, remember, remember, that's one bottom, two bottoms, confirmation low, bullish divergence on the oscillators, at the bottom of a range of some sort. Very good, right? So where you are, I mean, there's, there is one little support at like June 8th, you know, like you're right at it. So I think this, if you're in a range, I mean, eventually 1.71, 1.78 trillion, you understand that means that Bitcoin would be at 40K, Ethereum would be at $2,500, $2,600. Why, if I would be at almost $40,000. I mean, if, if this is going to play out, if you got one bottom, two bottoms. Really nice combination of variables there at decent, I mean, at, at lower risk areas, right? So just flip the chart over here. That's super double top, isn't it? Wow, what an area. So let's see though, because you, you, you gotta break this June 24th high at 1.4 trillion. You gotta break it, you haven't yet. 
and then you got a lot of work to do. You got to break that 200 moving average, and there's just a lot of appreciation in price has to occur. So that's uh, that's it. Hmm. Hey, something finally starting to top out just a little bit. Bitcoin dominance, I could understand why, right? If you're looking at what altcoins did today compared to Bitcoin, you're kind of double topping. And there's certainly, without a doubt, on the four hour, bearish divergence. Bearish divergence, impending price action reversal implied on Bitcoin.D. Not just the MACD, but the RSI. The RSI, man. Someone complimented the way I said RSI. And they're joking. They laughed. It's funny when you can make someone laugh, dude. All right. Try to make someone laugh every day. If you can, why not? Making people smile is a good thing. So it's down 2% today. 46.72% mark cap dominance. All right. Hey, remember we were talking about Ethereum and Bitcoin, right? Good air. Oh, there you go. You were at a real good area of congestion, right? You never made it that 113%. Too much divergence. And I'm not talking about divergence on just the four hour. We're talking about bullish divergence on the daily. Can you remember? Can you remember? Remember, it's not a joke. This area is like a steel wall of support. Remember, you broke out. You're holding it for now. Really nice run. And there's not much resistance at all at these areas. I mean, this just means that like Ethereum could outperform Bitcoin for a while. Just looking at this, okay? not bad so that is uh the Ethereum bitcoin to, you know bitcoin dominance total you know you look at bitcoin dominance you always normally want to see hey how's the Ethereum bitcoin look you know it's kind of inverse correlated in ways and hey you haven't even seen positive momentum yet on the daily that is real good for ethereum and if say bitcoin's gonna rally meander on up to 38.5 you could bet your bottom dollar that ethereum's gonna see 25 2600 dollars man all right divergence Let's go. Okay. So let's uh, take Gander over at Stonks real quick. That, uh, I'm sorry, was the highlight of the day, not crypto, despite how good it is to see some technical uh, breakthroughs on some of these coins, these altcoins, not so much Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the star yesterday that held its support, or you know, Saturday. 1272 FIB extension finally achieved from your previous high to low. You did it, man. And you exceeded it, 42.90. Very good. Next target's 43.13. Still some upside. Uh, remember, there was there was hidden bullish divergence on the weekly, unbelievably. Like, just crazy, dude. Bullish convergence on the daily. It's, just, it's whack, man. It's This market's doing really positive things. And it's non stopping, man. I mean, look at this week, dude. The weekly, undeniable, right? undeniable hidden divergence just and i guess ta is being respected in this hyper bullish ridiculous rudy poo market all-time highs continuing dji dow jones industrial not doing too hot down 0.44 percent today value still lagging underperforming uh, growth so, I mean, but growth had its time where it outperformed for six plus months, maybe even seven months. So, and gap filled today, technically, right? The gap from uh, June 24th, last week. And you technically, unfortunately, did bearishly engulf today. So, and you've now, it's that like one high, same high, and now maybe a lower high. So let's see what happens tomorrow where there was no bullish divergence of any sort on the daily not doing near as well as the S&P, nor the NASDAQ composite man. NASDAQ, killing it, dude. Melting up $14,500. Look what happened when it broke that resistance that goes all the way back to mid-February. Uh, soon approaching that 2618 foot extension. Hey Mitch, could you take a look at Lev and Verb both stocks when you have a moment, of course. Thank you, sir. Shaitani, I'll, I'll look at one. Thanks so much. All right. I will look at one of them. You can go ahead and type which one you want to look at in the chat if that's up to you, you know. Uh, and just beauty, right? Finally getting overbought for the first time today since February 12th. 
Very, very good. All right, we'll look at LEV, put it on the list. Not too many uh, requests today, understandable. But hey, who cares? A lot of requests that have been requested in the past are doing no, effing no, amazing, no. man. Can we check out Sell on the Nasdaq? Cheers. Yeah, well, look at that, Phil J. Thanks for the uh, 2438 Silver Jet, man. Thank you, dude. Beautiful. Uh, let's look at the Russell 2000. Small caps. Hmm, really struggling here. At a major inflection point, the top of the trading range. You're thinking with it, this is a rectangle. This is a this is a confirmed partial decline, where there's a high percentage chance, 70% plus chance of a breakout. Uh, it hasn't occurred yet. So you just gotta wonder. It reminds me kind of Amazon, where it it hit its top. It had a daily partial decline and and sold off but now what happened amazon caught a bounce today and that's okay right it doesn't have to break out immediately it just uh eventually all right okay so we got out all the index funds now let's look at gold right across the markets man across my gold dead gold is literally stopped moving it's flatlined i don't know it's just literally with all this hype on stocks and a little bit of crypto hopium uh, people are just not too worried about gold but gold just stuck in it a very critical ingestion or congestion point right inflection zone whatever you want to call it man call it all kinds of things and you're hoping this is the reversal area okay this is what you're hoping for you hold this huge potential inverse head and shoulders could occur we got a few of those going on across the markets not on precious metals Silver, <clears throat> same thing, flat line, stuck in Stucksville, holding above that 200 day moving average, but unable to break back above 26, uh, 18, which is a very critical support resistance. Sorry, I need to change these colors. Hmm. So uh, it's okay, making higher highs or same highs, higher lows. Just make a higher low than your March 26th low and all will be well you'll continue that accumulation narrative at least on the charts slow going man precious metals are really suppressed and they're not they're super you can call it a boomer the boomer market all right you want slow going here you go this is your this is your market dude this is as slow as it gets kind of right all right so we looked at them i mean we could we could keep it going we could we look at commodities, man. I mean, I was looking at uh, lumber futures, you know, that uh, still not doing too well. I mean, today it hit a low point of 724, 721, whatever. Uh, down at its lowest point today was down 58.17% in the 52-day period. But bounce finally caught some bids, but still well below 1820. Got to get back above 1820 if you want to see a, a nicer rally. But um, below the 200-day moving average, you're just in a correction. And there is no, certainly no edge on the daily. It's going to take a lot more time for an edge to develop, right? You get a relief rally, lower high, fill some gaps, sell off again, maybe double bottom. And then maybe show some seller exhaustion on the chart. That's it. That's your lumber. Uh, soybeans, man. You want to look at soybeans or something, dude? We can, we can do soybeans, okay? That is still like it, it, it's, it's, it bullishly engulfed today. It did, but there is no edge, and it reversed at a reversal area. It makes too much sense, man. Oh my God, TA too well respected, and I just I do like it bouncing on the 200 moving average like that. It's pretty good. What about the four hours? Four hour telling us anything on uh, soybean futures? I mean, that could be some dramatic bullish divergence there, but at the same time, I think it's. Oof, you got that one. You got that one low from January 25th. That's trying to hold on to, right? So I guess. You're strategizing risk or something like that. That's where one would have a stop just below that because it's a long way down, right? So you got that going for you. All right. Corn, corn futures. What a bounce today on corn up. Corn futures up 6.13%. What a double bottom in the end. And dang, man, I guess it just wasn't monitoring this well enough. Wow, I had. Had some bullish divergence, some really nice looking stuff on the oscillators. Okay, corn, baby. Corn's like, didn't hit its top, right? Remember, it's like you go, you zoom out. 
Remember, it uh, did not get hit near as hard. It's still in its uptrend. Still hasn't seen that um, demand line since freaking December. And yeah, bullish convergence going on. I mean, a low, a slightly higher low, much lower levels of negative momentum, higher levels of relative strength, bullish engulfing candle technically today, bullish Mara Bazoo, really. I mean, close enough to bullish Mara Bazoo. I mean, you could still see 778, 800. Because remember, that is the major inflection point for corn futures. Remember, it goes all the way back to the global financial crisis, 2011, 2012, and you haven't hit it yet. You've hit an 88% retrace and you're just consolidating right now. It's more like price contraction, a little sim triangle pennant, right? Oh God, let me, uh, sorry, this, it's just a, this is a work in progress, man. All my lines, I'm having to change them to gray. All right, you just got a little pennant going on, a little price contraction, all right? Corn futures, recovering nicely from the sell-off that hit all commodities back in mid-May. Okay. We cool? I think we are cool. So, let's look at the top performer on the S&P 500, NVIDIA, the Kang, man. The Kang, $800 of 5%. $799.40 to close, but after hours, $800.14. It's beautiful, man, right? You got a split coming, what, within a month? Maybe it's just the run-up leading up to that. I love it, man. It's been just carrying my portfolio. It feels like AMD last year, last summer, AMD was doing crazy stuff like this too. So uh, really excited about uh, NVIDIA. And I mean, if you speak of AMD, AMD also doing very well. Well, it was doing pretty well. It was pulled back, but riding the coattails of NVIDIA's success, you know, you're at the middle of a trading range and you could eventually see $94 again. Wow, how about that? Hey, Mitch, can we add OGN slash USDT to the list? Yeah, we'll look at OGN, man. Thanks so much, Lane, for the 20. I'm good. I'm good. Oh. <clears throat> now we got to look at Facebook. Facebook, $1 trillion market cap for the first time in its history. How about that, man? That's incredible. All right, so let me... Um, so what we got going on from your, remember the COVID crash, bullish cipher, right? This was the lowest low of the, the COVID crash. It was a beautiful, beautiful rally. Oh, uh, that occurred. Sorry, a lot of my lines are grayed out, old data. This descending triangle that looked like, oh man, it could be over for, uh, for Facebook, man. I don't think so. Let's go right there. Okay, you can see this. All right, so um, you've exceeded your local, like the descending triangle Fibonacci high to low. Uh, you've exceeded the 1618. You're separating from that 1618 Fib extension. And now, you know, I think what's going on now is you, I still have the old Fib extensions from the cipher, from the high to the low, right? Pre-COVID crash to the bottom of the COVID crash. You're approaching that 2618 FIB extension at $360. So we're going to see what the Facebook's made of at that level. It breaks that. You can see $400. $400, 261, major 2618 FIB extension. Or it's not, not the major one. It's actually the this high to low FIB extension. Okay, so you got a couple of them. A couple levels coming up. And it's just, it's just incredible, dude, right? I mean, talk about a measure move. Measure move of a descending triangle that breaks upwards because it's a very bullish trend, you've exceeded, you have now officially exceeded the measured move, which was 342 today, right? First time exceeding the measured move. Wow. That's incredible, dude. Let's go Facebook. Mooning. Okay. <clears throat> Intel, pretty interested. Third top gainer today. I know we've been talking about this Patreon. I like, I mean, I'm really, I know it's below a very critical resistance. Okay, man, I'm really digging how it's responding to this 200 moving average and making a higher low. I, I really, it's intriguing, man. I think this is like, what it's doing is, if it can break this, this critical zone of resistance here, it's a very big deal. And then you got that gap fill at 62.62, right? I think that'd be the target. So, I mean, 
See what I'm saying? It's that high. You got to break this June of 2018 level. It was a huge rectangle, man. Huge rectangle. And uh, I, I love the higher low right here. I love the 200 moving average correlation. I love the bullish convergence. I love how you're showing positive momentum again. All right, so let's just see how it plays out in the, the next uh, coming days. You know, you think this is scary, to, scary dude. Man, accumulation up here. I like it, man. I like it a lot. Let's look at uh, Tesla. Tesla's uh, one of the top gainers in the SP 500 today. Doing really well off that uh, that shark and hitting a 618 today. And good chance you see 717 to at least test that high from uh, March 9th. Happy birthday, Elon Musk, by the way. Yes, happy freaking birthday, man. You gotta do it, right? There's a. There's confetti for Elon Musk. He did it, dude. He turned 50, I think, today, right? Congratulations. Man, all right. Okay. I mean, there are others. I mean, like Microsoft, PayPal, Amazon, and all the Apple. My God, dude, you name them. Tech ones. Payment processors killing it, dude, right? This was uh, one identified for patrons. Everyone was pinged. You were warned on this one. It looked incredible. While Bitcoin and crypto looked trash, it was you had to keep your eyes on stocks because, dude, look what's going on. Exceeding 786 today again. And uh, gap fill up around 304. You break that, see you at 332. Right, a failed Gartley turns into a crab that could take you to 360 eventually. Now, you're going to get pullbacks and all that, right? You come in back test B. But this is a bad action magnet move breakout, right? I mean, when you break that, high probability of seeing the 786886, and you're, you're already there very fast. So it's like PayPal. Oh yeah, I mean like, I mean, I'm just like going all over the place. Let's look at Apple real quick because this one's showing tremendous amount of accumulation. Dude, so much accumulation. Look at this low, look at this higher low, bouncing off demand line. It's gorgeous, man. You're headed to 137.82 again. You break that, going 145. Then after that, the 160s, most likely. It's it look really good right now, man. Okay. Noise, noise. Really good. Mitch, can we take a look at Ford? Yes, sir, yes, sir. We'll noise, get it. Noise. So Submit. My... Can you check Mitt formally TRCH? Grand opening day on NASDAQ under the new ticker and was in a good day. They did a two to one reverse stock split, which I think caught a lot of us off guard. Myself included, <clears> Brown, <throat> hoping it'd bottom out. And yet. We will look. Thank you. Appreciate it, dude. What's up, Michael Parker, dude? Michael Parker took $25. Mitch stocks went crazy tight. Uh, it was beautiful, man. Damn, Check your portfolio. Zoom, baby. We'll look at it. Put it on the list, Michael. Much love. All right. <clears throat> 137.82 target on Apple to test the high from February. Oh, that wasn't even February. That was friggin' uh, September, dude. Imagine Apple, largest market cap company in the world by far. Done nothing in 300 days, been range bound. You understand? Structures that large, when they break out, <clears throat> when they actually make it above these areas, they go on insane runs huge markups like you saw before similar markups to what we got from march 23rd to the high in september that's the stuff we could get if you break these levels ever it's wild dude not overbought it's on the daily it's structurally sound look at that holding that 200 day moving average well it's, it's nice man and then you were seeing the 200 day moving average the first time since uh, the, the the COVID crash it's incredible you held it as support that's really really good man all right. Did a bunch of uh, banks today. <clears throat> they, they they didn't do well, but they uh, raised their dividends and they're doing stock buybacks. A lot of Morgan Stanley, right? Bank of America. Which other ones, dude? They're nice. Okay. I guess we can shift gears and get some of these uh, requests. All right. Okay, let's see here. Uh, check my notes. Gilliam. All 
All right, storage that has been devastated, obliterated, dilapidated, almost capitulated. Really want to see storage get back above 70 cents. As you can see, it's that old high back from August 30th of last year. Really want to see it get back above that. It's uh, most recent event is it's showing a lower low. Not really what you're looking for. Yes, very nice classic bullish divergence on the daily men, sure. So if the daily MACD histogram is respected, impending price action reversal implied. But dude, again, you got to get back above that level. If you do, I, mean, I think uh, it's really kind of just a zone here. You wanna see it above 70 to 80 cents. Just, you know how I do it, man. It's like right there. Hold on. We want to see the asset get back above this zone and I'll feel a lot better about it because anything below that, you could run the risk of seeing 30 cents again down there. So. That's your daily, uh, you know, really big downtrend. Let's, is there a wedge here of some sort, or is it just, that's a big supply line. You're also gonna have to break eventually. It's a big deal. I'm not sure. Uh, whoops, I got a playlist on my, hold on dude, sorry. Let's see here, we'll see here, man. Wait, you know what? I'm gonna... Sorry, dude. I got this. Okay. So I'm not sure if we have any kind of like Bulkowski pattern or anything like that. Is it a witch? It's more like a downsloping channel. You just got a channel, you know, a really nasty one. Um, there's no accumulation going on. Now, one thing you could be like, you know, you could be like, okay, from the lowest low from December, way too deep. So you can't even say you have a formal harmonic. So it's really, I think there are better looking assets out there. But I'll tell you this, one thing, from that low from there to the high, 88% retrace. So you could say value areas, this is not an area to be going short, okay? This could be an area where market participants perceive value on a speculative asset called storage that's probably useless, you know, it doesn't really do much. But yeah, this is the area where reversals can and oftentimes historically occur. But you, as you can see, look left, you got to do some stuff. You got to break 80 cents and then I'll feel a little bit better about it, okay? That's it, that is your storage, all right? Decent-ish. Probably better uh, altcoins to, to own than storage that are showing similar variables. Whew. Chat super quiet. Oh, it's just gonna get worse. I mean, you know, why do you think like it's, you know, I've been struggling, man. It's just like um, every day that goes by, chat gets more and more dead and Less and less people show up, and it's not my fault, as everyone says, but dang it, you know, this is what I do, and it's not, uh, it's not fun. Now, when you just focus on the charts, it's real nice. Let's see here. Okay. Well, I thought we were here before. Oh, we were here. Dude, remember uh, remember this one, dude? Nautilus? I don't know. I, there's a beautiful inverse head and shoulders, hit the measured move, hit the gap fill, exceeded it a little bit, and then dumped. And who cares after that, right? That was like, that was identified, man. Somewhere. That was beautiful. Very, very good. Let's clean it up a little bit. Perfect. Do you respect it? So you're talking about a, a hammer man? A hammer on the daily in, in LS? Four hour hammer. Ah. What? Awesome ice line? Ah. Oh. Just this low back from uh, December. 
Oh. Yeah, you're back testing the spring count. Yeah, so anything above 1613 could be really good. Sure. Yeah, look at that high back from January 2015. Pretty good. Yeah, big zone, right? Straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up. Straight. Good God. Straight, dude, it's like over and over and over, almost straight up, straight down every time. So, yeah, let's see what happens. <clears throat> I don't think it went deep enough for your formal harmonic that you would want, right? But yeah, uh, you're on to something. <clears throat> it's not bad. Not too bad. Yeah, I like it above 16, 1613, Matthew D. Sure. Sure thing, man. No edge on the oscillators, really, at all. I mean, kind of, you could maybe argue hidden bullish difference in the four hour. Maybe. Taylor was? Mm, just bullish convergence. Oh, you're showing positive momentum again today. Nice. So, yeah, let's see if it holds. Not like the, you know, most insane look and may not be even actionable but definitely worthy of an observation and point it out nice one dude thank you matthew okay next one boy i thought we've been here what the heck too many lion companies oh yeah yeah beautiful um Really, really nice. I mean, not, not bad anyway. Yeah, it looks really good. You look like you're in a range. Some sort of maybe Wyckoff accumulation. You got yourself a demand line on LEV. All right, higher highs, higher lows. Not really an edge right now. Not really at a critical area of support to be longing strategically, right? Because that's normally, you know, lower levels. It's like a range between $13 and $21.60, right? and you're closer to the top of it so it's you know kind of tougher there but uh maybe maybe you have wyckoff accumulation going on if you have a break 2159 and you're talking 2815 and possibly all-time highs all right so it's a decent chart it's not like again like it's one to maybe keep your eye on that's showing accumulation lots of it we just as easily could crap out and then you could end up getting something like this, you know, like X, A, B, C, D, and you get a shark or something, you know, seven, eight, six, eight, eight, six, right? And that'd be really nice, low risk. So, but you know, it's not, not too bad. You're above the 200, 200 moving average. Nice, not bad. Uh, daily. Oh, ooh, ooh, man, daily's nice. Nice, dude. Shitani. Uh, some slight, a smidge of hidden bullish divergence. I mean, is that it? Is it? Ooh, you have triple MACD hidden bullish divergence. Very, very nice. Impending price action continuation applied on a daily time scale is very promising. Very, very good. Right there. One, two, three. Oh, maybe, just maybe, if that's the case, you could be working on what? Three rising valleys. Or fall, yeah. Rising three balance. One, two, maybe three. Bullish engulfing candle today. Very nice. I just feel like if you, if you were to break out, you know, like pretty st standard measured move here on LEV. Financial conglomerate from the breakout. There you go. There's your target, you know, which would be 30, 34. Not bad. Not a bad chart. Okay. Not great. Not terrible. I mean, it's like more great than it is terrible, for sure. It's not too bad. Nice variables there, Mr. Desai. It's pretty good, dude. Ear to the ground. Very good. Hmm. <clears throat> C 
C-E-L-H, Celsius Holdings. Celsius, not the S-Coin, but the stock up 2% today, breaking back above a critical $70 area. Not bad. Filled a gap a few days ago. So if you can save up $70, very, very nice. Low, second low, bullish convergence. I mean, it's... Do you have some sort of X, A, B, C, D? Yeah, you could be working on something more major. Just think about it. Oh yeah, 7, 8, it's a butterfly. Butterfly that reversed to the 1414. Look what happened though, it reversed. And that was it. Underperformed so bad. And it's already rallied pretty well. And you just think that if it's gonna do that, it could continue on to the 1618 which could take it to $90 roughly. So let's, I think there's more upside on CELH, assuming it can hold above $70, seven, something $71. Squirrely Crypto, thanks to the 1618. Much love, dude. All right, appreciate it. Thank you, dude. What's up, Gray B, man? C note tipper earlier in the stream. Yes, we'll look at MHLD. Thank you, dude. Oh, yeah, more upside on CELH if you can stay above can where it's back testing, MHLD holding at support. Sure. Very, very strong here. What a pathetic attempt by bears to push this down on a gap down on something. High volume, pathetic. Too bullish right now. Look at this trend. It's really, really, it's going, dude. And if you break the 1618, you can imagine a 2618. 2618 could eventually take this thing to $120. So that's what you got going. We'll see if the next target gets achieved right around $90. Okay, that's it. Hmm. Who'd you in that look good? Still looks okay. Wow. All right, we had this identified. Um, it looked perfect. I mean, it actually reacted brilliantly. Very, very well. Right, I mean, off the PCZ of the bullish Gartley, the asset appreciated in value 60% in four days before the macro and Bitcoin rolled over and it lost all that and went to a lower low. Okay, so TA respected, but still, I mean, the macro plays a role here. Hey Mitch, I'm struggling to pick up big bag of a mid-cap crypto. I'm aware that if BTC dump everything done, the struggling projects are HBAR versus Fuel versus CHZ versus CTSI versus REN versus PHA. Good setup, you bullied on the new spot. Can. Thank you, Salted Dude. I uh, really appreciate it, man. And um, mid-cap crypto. Whatever, dude. You just go with... Uh... Ethereum, dude. Like, I don't even know why you didn't have to worry about. It's like Ethereum's so good. Uh, thank you, dude. So look at this, man. Look at OGN Origin Protocol, January 2020, March of 2020, August 2020. Clearly, that is your cutoff. You're holding it. You're above it. All is well. Okay, 786, beautiful reaction. Well, fine. 886 goes to an 886, a deeper value area. Sure, still an XABCD. This is exactly where reversals occur, okay? This is exactly where this asset could rally tremendously to much higher levels, right? Where your targets would be. I mean, Casey Stubbs targeting, right? 120 and then 137-ish, okay? That's that's it. Like, that's that's where uh, this asset's gonna go if it can hold this very, very critical area. That's it. Now, if Bitcoin dumps, yeah, it's over. It's over for OGN, it's gonna break 50 cents and it's going to heck. Okay, it's going down to like, it's gonna lose half its value. It's gonna go down like 25 cents. But, it's a big if, man. It's a steel wall. It should be anyway. So, yep, upside potential eventually on this asset. If the macro continues to rally, Bitcoin continues to rally and does not roll over, I mean, your upside's 80%. 80% upside on OGN for like that first real target. Yep. OGN looks, looks good, man. Looks fine still. Assuming it stays about 50 to 55 cents, all right? That's your OGN. And also, you want, just so you understand, 
It's not just that, it's also the fact that you go from that lowest low back from November of 2020 to the highest high, the asset has lost 88% of its value. And at its 88% value area, one bottom, two bottoms. So there could be a confirmation low at a, the deepest retrace area where market participants perceive a value. 88% sale on OGN, oh my God. Yeah, these are areas, these are certainly areas where it's lower risk and this is where assets can reverse majorly. New waves can be ushered in with these harmonics at these levels, okay? I'm just telling you, yeah, it could just keep dumping, dude. But this is exactly where reversals happen. Why? Because we know, because on all markets, this is exactly where assets go nuts over and over and over again for 100 plus years. So that's it, dude. Is that a joint? For Blue, I think it's 420, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you understand where we're coming from on OGN and many other altcoins. Remember, the scrubs have lost everything. Okay, the scrubs lost it, dude. Now your levels where they've capitulated, they're out, they're, they quit, they're going back to, you know, do what, what they do. They're gonna go watch PewDiePie again, right? Composite operators laughing. Sorry. Been busy just wondering what kind of new age Hulu Dev's TV show AI thing is that on the right? Does it make breakfast? Alexa Siri 3.0 or just a mini CERN? Beat ups, thanks for the $50 uh, contribution, dude. Uh, on the right? What you talking about, dude? I'm confused. about that over there? On the right? That's your right. That's my right as well. Um, that's a computer. It does things, it computes things, and encodes things. Is that what you're talking about, dude? Or are you talking about this thing here? Or kind of confused beat ups. Thank you, man. That's a, that's a computer, dude. Yep, it uh, it does talk to me sometimes because it has so much power. It's taken on a mind of its own. That's all, that's all good, dude, all right? Don't worry about it. I am human. Okay, OGN is good, and there's a lot of upside on it. If this area can hold, it's a big if, but if it does, t telling you 120 to 137 would be the targets. All right, OGN, not bad, man. Not bad. The argument's presented, okay. 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 Move along, sir. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei! Okay. Yeah, I was looking at Ford today. Ford that is down 1.51% today. Who even cares, man? This thing is unreal. This thing is testament to how incredibly real technical analysis is. It's taught here. It's, it's beautiful, dude. You have to go to the weekly to see it. Um, let me pull up that chart that I showed. I was showing my, uh, my contractor and his workers today. We were having a good time. And, um, went all the way back to May 20th. Okay, May 20th of uh, last year, all right? You see this chart. You see everything that happened. The 10-year large bullish Gartley pattern. The 10 year large spring back test of spring that occurred on the COVID crash. The spring back test was the 1999, I'm sorry, the 1990 levels. Okay, that's what, it's, that's what it back tested. Same time you had the volume signature. Volume signature, very, very real, dude. The volume that high ushers in reversals, okay? And so here it was. Every patron, everyone that was a patron was pinged May 20th. 2020, here it was. Here was my chart. The price was $549. The price currently is $15, right at the exact same effing level. There's no change, dude. Okay, so this is the power of harmonics, especially on weekly time scales. It's unbelievable, dude. Beautiful.
Yeah, dude. <clears throat> That's your forwards, because right now it's like, I don't know there's really actually much of a, uh... Do you have respect in? Uh, so... Yeah, like, zooming out. It's like, eventually, 1737, you know, you've exceeded to the targets that were posted, again, literally over a year ago, 13 months ago, they were posted as targets. And you're, you're above the second one. All right. But the monthly, if the EV narrative continues, I think we've got even more insane targets, okay, where you could eventually see all-time highs and beyond. It's too gorgeous, dude. Absolutely insane. Look how beautiful it looks on the monthly. There was even bullish divergence down there at the pattern completion zone and a 1414 fib extension. And you look, even on, okay, on the monthly, you hit that high, right? The level 1613 I had plotted. It's like a zone of support resistance, right? Between 1613, 1737. You have to break that, dude. Look out. Look out, man. Much higher levels upon ye. Okay, that's four. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's not much you can do, right? I mean, we were looking at Torchlight and uh, it's grand opening on the NASDAQ today. It got as high, holy crap. This asset got as high as 2189 today and closed at $8. So from its, imagine FOMOing in at 2178. Someone did, someone literally bought. Someone facilitated the liquidity for someone to offload their position at 2178, right? It's a zero sum game. So what happened? The asset lost 63% of its value in at one trading session today. So half level that, dude, that is, that's wacky. That's wacky even for crypto. Freaking whack, dude. But yeah, closed right below that high from March of 2011. And that's it. I mean, that's literally it, dude. I don't know, there's just range bound asset, right? You can clearly see it range bound and it's still confined within the range. That's it, dude. So there's not much I can really do for you, right? Oh, it's the monthly, my bad, dude. Sorry, it looks so good though. Uh, okay, never mind. That was the monthly, sorry. In one month, it lost 63% of its value. No, 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 so we looked at this, like I think last week or something, bearish divergence on the weekly, ooh, on that RSI. Technical dark cloud cover last week and immediate follow through price action where, yeah, now you're at just this critical $8 area. Sorry, dude, it was, it was definitely the monthly I was just looking at. I, I, Right up, whoops, brain fart. So uh, down 20% today, 20%. If you fall below this, man, the support at $8, the target would be 477. It could lose 100% of its value because there's just no support until that level, right? That's it. So let's see what happens tomorrow, being down 20%. And dude, that's some serious divergence, isn't it? Serious bearish divergence on a very, very significant time scale. Wow. Okay, anyway, that's M-M-A-T, but last week it was T-R-C-H. We looked at it, okay? Yeah, audio is that good? Because there's still stuff I have to do. There's a lot of furniture I don't have in here. There's no pictures on the wall yet. I've just, just got my 55 inch hung. Here, I'll show y'all. Got it hung uh, this weekend. There it is, it's beautiful. So there you go, showing you a little bit of that. Okay. Next one. Y'all zoom my nuts, dude, didn't it? 4.4% today. 
remember that. Remember, Zoom was a textbook, fantastic, beautiful, falling wedge pattern. It was so pretty, wasn't it? Patrons, you were pinged. We were all talking about it. We've been covered, we've covered in stream. We can talk about targets 431 and 468. You're sure. Typical falling wedge pattern targets, right? That's, that's it, dude. Okay. That is it, man. Beautiful. So, TA's in the midst of being respected. Uh, it doesn't get prettier than that. You don't get falling wedges that are this pretty. Not really, you know. All right, that's, that's Zoom, man. Like, you know, thinking Michael Parker for the 25. On the way. To completely respecting to you. Ooh, gross. MHLD for Gray V. Yes, you could imagine, right? What's going on? You got an asset that uh, is range bound. Yeah, head and shoulders, dude. But I don't just don't say it's this trend is stupid. You know, it's a stupid trend. If it breaks 318, that's the neckline. It's then doomed. Yes, for much lower prices, but. It's testing the 200 moving average on the four hour, at least today, for the first time since November of last year. Wow, what kind of volume came in? That's crazy. That type of volume coming in on an asset and it fails to break a major critical resistance. It's very bad, that's not bullish. Um, almost a bearish engulfing candle today because it opened lower than the close last week. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this could be in trouble. If it breaks 318, you could understand a lot of downsides could be in store for this asset. Just the same, maybe it's just range bound. So just be cognizant though, the oscillators don't really look good at all. They're not implying anything positive, anything like, oh, there's no bullish edge right now on MHLD. Uh, it's actually really bearish to see an asset with that much volume reject a critical level that was once resistance initially as resistance again right all this effort that bulls put in so much effort and such little reward major rejection at a critical resistance it's never really a good thing okay so just saying mhld maiden holdings get wrecked dude look on the weekly Ooh, what Weekly, same story, kind of, right? Looseless. Nice run. It's okay, so there's certainly no value. This is exactly an area where it would reverse, where it could reverse, right? Because it has reversed there before. The only time it's ever been here, October 2018, is exactly where it got wrecked. So this is this makes plenty of sense where it could reverse again. So if it ever breaks 364, yeah, you could have a really nice run up to like six bucks. Sure. Yeah, and you're like, what is it? Is it a couple handle? I don't know, man. All right, let's just, you know how long this could take, right? The weekly, it could take like three months, four months to handle, to absorb remaining supply if it was going to. So, I mean, it's just, if you break 364, yeah, you could have, you could do, all, like almost double up. You could go like up 80% or something, you know? But you just appreciated value substantially in the past year and you're just failing to break resistance that you must break. You know, on high volume, you can't. Yeah, eventually hidden bullish shivers. Uh, yeah, man. So it's kind of like there are better assets out there. But yeah, maybe pay attention to 364. Whatever breaks it, yeah, it could go boom again. All right, that's it. Gravy. Thank you for twenty, Dad. Solta, I don't really know something you're asking me. Um, you're kind of talking about all these assets compared to each other. I don't really know what to do about that. You know. And then uh, V Dub's not really requesting anything, so we good. Did it, man? I got through all the requests today. Been live one hour and eight minutes. If you're enjoying the live stream, hit that like button, that bell, that sub. I know no one really cares anymore. Even though, I mean, I'm making a lot of money. I know a lot of patrons are making money, but the the Moon Boys are penniless. They're they're broke, dude. They're broke and they're they've lost their hype. And hype can oftentimes drive this stream, unfortunately. Yeah, what are you gonna do, man?
I mean, you can care or not, I don't care. I'm going to keep making money. I know people that actually care about the stuff that we teach here are going to keep making money too. So, you know, it's just fun. Like, you know, money isn't everything, right? And that's what I just keep saying. It's like money is not everything, you know? Oh, you keep making more money. Great, dude. Well, there are other things that can make you happy or that, right? So, you know, other metrics to success and happiness. So uh, that's it, dude. That's the stream, you know. Can't really keep it going, um, you know. Hard to keep the stream going beyond an hour when um, it's like this, when the conditions are like this. So it's fine. I'm sure others can probably do it. So um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the likes, love, support, contributions, everything in between. Uh, Y'all are amazing, dude. I just can't even believe it, Ross. You, you're now you're the penthouse Jesus over yourself. He keeps competing against himself. And there's also the session top today, and then Ubi and Ubi and freaking Gravy. All y'all, thank you so much for supporting this channel. So um, let's see if Bitcoin, you know, it might pull back here, right? It very well could. Positive momentum waning. But there's no real true bear shiver and truly. Hey, Mom, times will change soon. We are breaking a downtrend on the RSI on the daily on BTC. Oh yeah, is that a daily? Hey, yeah, hey. Oh, uh, not yet, not yet. Dude. We got a while to go. We got we got some work to do. You know that RSI downtrend thing. That's what he's talking about. Yep. So this is the thing the perfect song to play to end the stream because my god I'm praying for it all right I'm praying for it Yeah eventually break the RSI trend line it could go up to 60 again and it would be glorious you've been in a downtrend since friggin beginning of the year Thanks again, everyone. I love y'all. I'll be back. Until next time, respect the tea. Hey.